Hey, it's Joseph here. I've got uh, this box over here that I want to unbox today and kind of show you what is inside of it. It is Insta360X3, which is a successor to One X2. And this time they just dropped the name of One and then just named it as X3 and it is a pocket 360 action camera. I will do a detailed review as well as showcasing specific use case for X3, but I already use one X2 for various different reasons. So I'll get into that in later videos, but today's video I wanted to cover the unboxing portion of this camera and couple of accessories as Insta360 have sent me a couple of accessories with this camera. So yeah, there's quite a few of them that I just received and I wanted to disclose the fact that Insta360 have sent me this camera as well as these accessories for me to try out and showcase and make a video like this. But I do have quite a lot of accessories for Insta360 cameras because I have been using Insta360 cameras and I needed accessories for them. So I'll bring those accessories as I go through a couple of these things that are on my desk. So first of all, let's go ahead and look at the camera itself first and then get into the other bits. So here is the packaging, the box but let's go around to the side and it's got 5.7K 360 capture, single lens mode, and then 72 megapixel 360 photo, and then active HDR video, invisible selfie stick, flow state stabilization, 360 horizon lock, and waterproof to 10 meters, and voice control and AI powered editing. All the stuff that I'm quite familiar already from previous generations and going to the back, I guess, on this side is a bunch of pictures and on the back it states what's inside of the box and Insta360 X3, charging cable, protective pouch, quick start guide and lens cloth are expected inside of the box. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open this. Okay, there it is and let me open this accessory box first. So I guess it is telling me to download the Insta360 app, which is already downloaded on my phone. And then you basically open it like so. I'm just figuring this out as I go. And then here is the charging cable or USB type C to USB type A port. And then the protective pouch. So it is a flexible material case. And I like the fact that they now have a little hole over here for you to charge the camera even within the pouch, which was a problem before. And then as always, they included some papers that I won't really go through as well as cleaning cloth and the stickers. I've got a bunch of them at this point. So I'll just put all of these back in and then the camera itself, it is slightly bigger than what I am used to for One X2. And it's got a couple of peels on it, so let's do it. And here is a sticker. I think it's meant to be peeled, but let's read the message. Pull out the battery first to insert a micro SD card that meets UHSI V30 standards. Make sure the battery cover and USB cover are clean and dry before closing. Okay. So we'll get into that in a bit. And the overall construction is quite similar to the previous generation, other than the fact that it is slightly thicker as well as the much bigger screen and rectangular rather than circular. And it's got power button and then there's a Q button which did not exist before. And there's a little hole for either speaker or microphone of some kind. That might be it as well. And then another microphone. So I guess one is a speaker and then the other two are microphones. And then going around this side is something over here perhaps USB-C port, which has a nice flapping door before it used to be something that you just have to pry open and it just dangles around. So this is nice. And then the battery is probably over here. That seems pretty much the same. Based on my search, the battery is a different size and capacity, but it looks 
very similar and you can insert the micro SD card in there. I'll do that later. And on the bottom, you got quarter 20 typical tripod thread in there, which is very nice. And I'm seeing probably the microphone hole in here as well and one down here. So I am counting at least one, two, three, four, five different microphone points. And that's probably all working together to isolate some sort of sound. Curiously, there is a little notch around the lens. I wonder if that is some sort of replaceable lens cover kind of thing. And also it's got dedicated two buttons that are over here. So I guess that is to start recording and then menu button. And oh, I could press it. Oh, I guess it has some juice in it and it's vibrating. That's very nice. I don't think it used to vibrate and it says no SD card detect. The camera will automatically turn off. Okay. So I guess I need to insert the SD card. Notice how I lay the camera on top of the carrying case because you can easily damage the lens or scratch on a surface that is a bit rougher than wood top perhaps. So this is much better just putting it on top of the case or I can just put this in like so to protect it so that you can just open up the USB-C port flap and then basically charge it. That's a uh, very considerate move there because that used to not be that way. And I think this is a good time for me to bring out a uh, old one to just kind of show you in comparison. Mind you, I have the lens cover that are the sticky kind onto here. So the lens appears bigger with a transparent plastic on top, but it is basically just the cover that I have added on top of the lens to protect it. But here it is. The screen is round on the previous generation, one X2, and then X3 has a rectangular screen. And then it's got one more button on the front as to just the one circular one and onto the side this side you got same power button and then there's another Q button there and I guess that's the same speaker point as well as the microphone but that seems slightly bigger in comparison and then moving on to the back it looks almost identical except the fact that it says X3 over here and then X2 over there and then little notch below the lens I need to figure what that is and then actually on the top, nothing there. And moving on to this side, but you can see that I basically pulled out the door, which is kind of dangling bit over here because I don't really need much of a water resistance, but rather a quick access to USB-C port because it was kind of difficult to get at, especially when that is kind of flapping over the port. Whereas over here, you can easily open it and then it just stays open rather than flapping all around. And I like the fact that you can just easily close it. So yeah, that's a much needed addition there. And you can see that the battery door is slightly smaller on this side. You can kind of see that this side is slightly thicker. It feels a lot bigger in hand because the overall girth is bigger, but visually it's not that much bigger actually. It is heavier though. So it feels more dense on the hand. Yeah, I like the fact that it's got more buttons, two more physical buttons, as well as much larger screen. And then definitely that USB-C port cover. Yeah, I'm looking forward to using this camera. And notice that I have this rubber cap or lens cover for my other camera. So. I'll try and get the same thing for this camera too. So let's look at the accessories. So here are several accessories that were shipped together. Let's go ahead and open this one, which is the lens cap. I mean, I don't expect anything fancy other than rubber cap for lens protection which is basically the same thing that I was using before, but it seems slightly bigger. It provides a bit more cushion. That's nice. So I can just lay it flat on a desk like that. And I also got Insta360 micro SD card and the standard that you are actually looking for. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it is the V30 standard that you are looking for. You need to have that at least on your card to be able to record the 5k 360 video on it and you can do all sorts of cool video shots. I actually plan on using 
using this camera on a trip that is coming up. Actually, my trip is coming up in two days. I'll be flying to Vancouver for a conference and I'll be having interesting shots with this camera. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Anyways, I need to have this standard of SD card so I can actually record in high fidelity or high resolution. So let's pop this open and then insert the SD card. There are very few, there are few SD cards that Insta360 recommends. Otherwise, you can actually run into recording problems. So I do advise using those SD card or perhaps the one from Insta360. And then I can perhaps turn it on at this point. Just press the power button once. And again, it is vibrating interesting and then i select english please download the insta360 app in the app store or google play to activate your camera so let me go ahead and do that launch insta360 app which i use all the time so let me go ahead and connect to the camera so the camera is found connect camera bluetooth connecting connect to app it just shows up like that, okay? There is a new firmware for the camera, so let's go ahead and update that. So whilst the firmware is being updated on the camera itself, let's go ahead and open a couple of different things. I think this would be an easy one. So here is a selfie stick, I think. And this is a very familiar looking selfie stick. It's slightly different length. So I actually have a, several different versions of this selfie stick from Insta360. So let me just kind of show you. So here are two other selfie sticks that I owned before. I forget which one is the first one, but here is a very short one and then longer one. And now I've got a middle size one. So it just kind of all went in different length, if you will. A couple of things that I want to mention is the fact that the long one was long, but it actually needed this to be twisted. So whenever I twist this to open, I can lengthen this and it is about yay long. I would say that's about four feet wide, which is the length of my desk. So yeah, that's good, but this easily turns and a twist away so i have to lock it by twisting it but often it doesn't get locked securely so i often have an incident where i'm carrying around the camera and all of a sudden the camera just whoop, comes down because it loses the resistance so that often becomes a problem for this long one and it is kind of long in a folded form so the length it is 11 inches long but if you extend it it is four feet long i think it has finished the firmware update so let me go ahead and confirm that camera info and the firmware is 1.0.04 and now it has a one more setting over here which is stabilization and stitching effects for lens guard and then disabled okay cool now i can also go into the app itself since that is now connected and now i can have the camera and then basically look into the app to look around that is basically the remote feature that i use you can kind of see what's going on inside of my room and my desk and then actually explain about selfie sticks whilst the short one is the lightest but it is the shortest meaning when you extend it all the way it is about yay much let me measure it it is about 27 inches so it doesn't really get me the length I need. I think it is fine for a selfie stick, literally just pointing at yourself or whatever that you are looking at. And it is quite simple because you can just pull out and then push in. It's just a little resistive, but it doesn't take a lot of force to push in. So I think it's fine and I have used this before, but I guess now they got the middle size. It takes a bit of force to pull this, but it doesn't require the twisting action so there's no fault of it kind of collapsing on its own and yeah it is much longer than the short one that i had it is exactly four feet as well so 
it is a same length as this long one but it is much shorter when it is collapsed and the form factor is pretty much the same it's got the rubber grip and then the same thickness it is much lighter too as it is resistive rather than the twist motion i think this would be the winner i have used both of this at the same time to get the length that i need basically twist it together and then get the length that I need off of this is something that I have done before and for that reason I actually had purchased a very very long monopod or selfie stick from Insta360 which is this big big one and it is much thicker and it is slightly heavier but it is carbon fiber so it is relatively light as well but this gets you three meters long of length so you can get a little feet I typically use this one but you can get much smaller one like this one over here which is simpler and then you can basically twist onto the back of the monopod and then basically stand it so that you get that and then pull out to mount your camera and get the length you want or you can just kind of hold it and carry it like that too which is very simple kind of carry around form factor. I think I'm gonna have this inside of my bag. I wanna use this camera and get all sorts of cool shots. But whenever I need much longer length, the site visits and site surveys, I will use this combination where the feed is a lot sturdier and it's heavier, therefore a lot more stabilized. So it's a bottom heavy, therefore it doesn't topple over as easily and you get much more length so I can reach into crevices of places that I can't really climb up and look into and basically use this as like a drone or sort of something that I send away. I can easily reach the at the end of the room with this. This is what I bought from Insta360 and it's proven to be very good. So happened to be on a rooftop and this is what the rooftop is like but I need something to reach very up high, like that. And then I can just see about everything. So the view looks like this. If you use camera, 360 camera, so that I can capture everything. So it makes it a lot easier. Anyways, let me have this standing. Now let's have a look at this one over here, which is a microphone adapter. And I have not had to use this before on One X2 because I've never really recorded videos with voice on it. But if you ever intend to do so, make this into a vlogging setup because I think it is very capable camera, especially with the amount of stabilization that it can apply. Oh, this is quite small. So you can just undo this and you get USB type C port on one end and then another USB type C port with a microphone jack. Interesting. So I can open the USB C port and then perhaps how do I do this? It doesn't tell me how exactly, but it does show me a picture that it doesn't have the flap on the camera. So let me attempt that. Oh, you can just basically pull it out. And once you pull it out, you can add that in there. Oh, interesting. And then you get a microphone jack as well as a charging port at the bottom. So if you have a microphone like this and a tripod for vlogging setup, I could basically mount this onto the camera and then I got a nice microphone cold shoe over here and then I can attach that here and then attach the microphone jack onto the camera and I've got a vlogging setup with this camera it's a nifty setup and because you do not have to use 360 video all the time you can use the one camera mode either you can show this side only versus that side only and then record yourself let me actually test it out and see what it sounds like so just turn it on 
and then actually on top it's showing me the microphone level i don't know if you can see on the camera but it is picking up microphone i'm seeing that and i see that it is detecting a external microphone and it is going up and down so single lens so if i do the 360 versus single lens mode i can go into video i guess i could start recording press that button start recording and look at myself and this is a selfie mode or vlogging mode and that is what's going on and the stabilization works really well i don't know how well it does on the night shot but yeah on a darkness this is what my desk setup looks like just press that button over here and then switching to outer single lens so this is what it looks like you're now seeing the outer side of the lens and then I'm showing you what's going on over here and that's my setup and you're hearing me through my microphone how does this sound so this is a microphone testing of the external microphone and connected to the vlogging setup of X3 and this is what it sounds like and it is about arm's length away and you're hearing me through the external microphone Sennheiser MKE 200 and what you're about to hear now is the one without the external microphone so let me stop the recording basically record off of the camera's microphone so that you guys could hear the difference okay now I actually have taken out the microphone or the external microphone off of X3 so now you are hearing my voice through the internal microphones of the X3 and this is what it sounds like in the same distance and same setup. How does it sound? So yeah, I was able to record that quite easily, but now I wonder what this can do. So supposedly this is Ulanzi made PT20, which is an invisible mic cold shoe for Rode Wireless Go. I actually do not have Rode Wireless Go, but actually have a wireless microphone that is very, very similar in terms of form factor and the functionality as well. So this is the microphone that I have used before on recordings, which is a Comica Boom XD. I really like these because they are kind of similar form factor as Rode Video go and I believe the clip on the back is the same so it actually has these six prongs under it so you can kind of do that and it should fit as well there you go so it just clips on it fits nicely with this bracket and I guess you just kind of put this up against the camera and then basically use a selfie stick like this use the microphone adapter and then mount it here oh i should have rotated it around i'm figuring this out so rotate it like so it is all on the same side and i guess i could use a different jack as this one that is much shorter so that the wire doesn't catch within the 360 view it's pretty well made so you don't get the wire shown on the screen. It's all well tucked away. I think that is what you're meant to do. So let's actually test it and see if it is visible or not. This is a quite a compact setup. Supposedly no problem on 360. Basically clip it onto my shirt like that and it is actually picking up I can kind of see it and I'm switching over to 360 mode so that this shows the entire angle I can kind of see that the microphone level is also going up and down so with this supposedly I hit record button and then it is going to start recording so the microphone now that you are actually hearing is through the microphone that is attached to my shirt or under the shirt there and yeah it is wireless working and i wonder if i scroll around that i'll be able to spot the microphone or not nope it is completely invisible i am not able to see that so the selfie stick and the camera and the microphone completely have vanished out of my shot and it is just stitching away it's quite incredible what it does 
So kind of cool, isn't it? So I can basically do this to capture 360 videos and using even the wireless microphone. So with this setup, I'll be able to walk around, stabilize 360 videos and a microphone that is attached to me rather than something that is far away so that you guys could hear me very well. Quite cool, isn't it? Anyways, I'm going to take this onto the road two days later as I visit Vancouver for 3D Basecamp SketchUp conference and I'll be testing a bunch of things out with this new camera. So yeah, Insta360, thank you for sending this camera and a whole bunch of kit that just works quite well together. And if you found it useful, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel to continue watching these type of videos as well as that 3D Basecamp video. And thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll see you next time. Bye.